Hi, my name is Paul Grogan. Welcome to my tutorial and playthrough for Hermagorn Market, a print and play roll and write game designed by Emmanuel Ornella, who has asked me to create this video to assist the Kickstarter campaign. I'm going to be teaching you how to play in this video whilst also playing through a solo game. And although I'm playing a solo game today, you can actually play this with more than one player. Each player will need their own sheet of paper, but you also need three dice and one player rolls the three dice and then everybody uses the same result. So the first thing you need to do is you need to go on to the website. Now, if you are a backer of the campaign, I believe you will be given an account which will allow you to go on there. And as you can see, there are various options for creating your own sheet. There's various options for the print quality um, and how many sheets you can print. So we're just going to print uh, one sheet today for me. This is my name here. Uh, and we're going to be using the, the full ink option. There is a low uh, ink option if you wanted to print that one. Now, the other thing that is optional is that you can have it auto generate the road costs. I'm going to be doing that for this playthrough today, but I will explain later on how you can play the game by generating your own road costs. So let's get this printed out and then let's make a start. So here we are with my printed sheet. This is what you get when you print it out. You can see my name is on here. Now the other components you're gonna need uh, to play this, you're gonna need some kind of marker to represent you. Uh, I'm using this little blue meeple that starts here on the castle. You're gonna need three dice. Uh, you don't need a dice tray, but I'm gonna use a dice tray. So I'm using my gaming rules dice where the six is the gaming rules. And you're gonna need some kind of writing implement. So every player will need one of these, one of these, and the board but you only need one set of dice no matter how many players are in the game right let's jump into what this game is about you are a merchant this is me the blue merchant and i'm going to be traveling around these towns trying to sell my goods to get as much money as i can now the game is played over 32 turns which you can see here each one of these icons is a turn and you do them in order so we're going to do this then this then this then this then this then this then this and then we go down to the next. Now you can see that there's a sequence to this. Basically, we're going to roll dice four times, then we're going to travel, then we're going to sell goods, then we're going to do maintenance. Then it's rolling dice three times, travel, sell, maintenance. Same again, then it goes down to two times, two times, one time, and that's it. That's the 32 turns of the game. Now, I'm going to zoom ahead and I'm going to jump to how you score the points, because what happens at the end of the game, you're going to add up all of the numbers in the travel column, which is basically how much you've spent to travel around, that will get added into there. That's a negative points. Then you will add up all of the numbers in this column, which is basically how much money you've made from selling goods. That's your positive score. Then you're going to add up all of the numbers in the maintenance column. That gives you another negative score. And then also you have these five bonuses here. So for each one of these that you do not use, in other words, that's not crossed out, you're going to add up the values that gets you there. And that will get you your final score. So that's what we're trying to do. Play over 32 turns. We're trying to get uh, high numbers in this, low numbers in this, and low numbers in this. Right, so what this game is, as I say, we're a merchant, we start off here in the castle, and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be generating goods, which we're going to put here in our stalls, and then we're going to be travelling around from one town to the next uh, to try and sell those for a profit. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain the rules in detail as we go, but just a quick explanation. As I mentioned uh, earlier on, we're using the option where it has generated these numbers for us. Now, at the end of this video, I will explain the option uh, of how you generate these numbers yourself, because that does allow you a lot more choice um, and a lot more sort of tactical options. But when you first play the game, I would recommend you go with the with the automatic numbering so that it, it, it does that for you. Um, but this is basically the cost of traveling around. Now, the five different types of goods, we can see them down here in the stock exchange. We've got coffee, we've got books, we've got uh, diamonds, we've got spices, and we've got gold. The number here shows the current sale price of those items. Uh, and what we want to try and do is we want to try and move this price up so that when we sell our goods, we get more money for them. This here is our market stalls. This is where we record how many goods of each type that we've got. Uh, you will see that there are five columns, which are the dice. We've got five rows, which are the dice. We've got the type of good. We've got the number of spaces for the goods in there. And the little number is the maintenance cost, which I've mentioned here. Maintenance cost is bad, but sometimes we're going to have to, we're going to have to pay those costs. Now you'll notice on the map that the cities or the towns that we're going to be visiting have a number of scrolls. Um, have we got any with one? No. Okay, so this is a randomly generated map. Well, not completely random, but there's obviously some kind of clever algorithm. This is randomly generated as well. 
And on the map I played yesterday, I think there was a couple of places with only one scroll. But basically, each scroll is, it represents somebody who wants to buy a certain amount of things. But if you're going to sell items to that person, to that scroll, you've got to complete everything. So you can't go here just with a diamond, a coffee and one gold. Oh no, they want diamond, coffee and two gold. So you've got to complete each scroll individually. You don't have to complete all of the scrolls, uh, but the more scrolls you do complete, the more points you're going to get. Right, let's make a start and let's jump in uh, and let's do turn one. So turn one is this icon here, which basically means we roll the three dice. So every time you see that icon, which is all of these times, we roll the three dice. Okay, we've got a four, a six and a six. Now, I will tell you that a six is considered to be a wild card when choosing a column or a row. So we've got three dice. We must use all of those three dice. One of them is going to choose, is going to determine the column. Another one is going to be term, determine the row. And the third dice is going to determine how many goods we get of that type. Now, unfortunately for the, for me, I've rolled two sixes, which means if I wanted to, I could use both of these sixes to, to determine the column and the row. And basically I can choose anything. And then I get four of it. Now, what you want to be doing at this stage is you kind of want to be thinking ahead. You want to be thinking, right, well, where am I going to go first and to try and sell goods? Because we've got four turns of rolling dice and generating goods before we then travel and we then sell. So I'm going to look on the board. And again, I'm not going to think too much about this just because this is a, a playthrough video, but I'm, I'm looking and I'm thinking I might want to go here first. So am I going to be able to get all of these goods here to then be able to sell them? Uh, and the answer is yes, but how am I going to do it? So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose, um, yeah, I'm going to choose that this six is actually a three and that this six is also a three and that I'm going to generate four. So I've chosen that dice there, that dice there, which means I'm generating diamonds and I'm going to use the four to tell me how many diamonds I'm generating. Now, if that was just a one, I would fill in one of those. And if it was a two, I'd fill in two of those, but it wasn't, it was a four. Now what you're allowed to do, you are allowed, say, say if that was a five, I'd still be allowed to use the five, even though there were four spaces, I would just lose the extra one. So because I rolled a four, I've now got four diamonds. Now the other thing you can do is at any point in the game, you can change one of your dice to either a one, two, three, four, or five. But if you do that, then what happens is you actually cross out that die. And if you remember back to what I said earlier on, the more of these that we have not crossed out at the end of the game, that's going to get us bonus points. So you don't want to use these if you can help it, but if you need to, sometimes it can be the right thing to do. Anyway, that was my first dice. I rolled a six, which I treated as a three, six, which I treated as a three, and a four, giving me four diamonds. That is the first turn done. Now we do the second turn, which is basically roll again. Right, we've got two fours and a five. So at this point, we could go for four, four, and we could get five coffee. Uh, or we could go five, four, and get four books. Uh, or we could go four, five, and get four spices. Now, one of the things in this game that's important is, let's say, for example, I decided to get four spices. In this stall here, there are space for six. But if I generate four right now, I only colour in four of the dots, but then I can't use that stall again. Okay, so once you have rolled and you have allocated your dice to a particular stall, you cannot allocate any more to that stall for the rest of the game. So if I did that, I'd be losing out potentially on, on two spaces. Um, but let's have a look at what we've got. I've already got the diamonds that I need for going here. So I'm looking at generating two gold, uh, a book or a spice. Um... Well, let's have a look if we've got, so what are my options again? Four, five, I could get four spices, but I'm a little worried about this maintenance cost. This is quite high, but that's the disadvantage with rolling high dice. Um, ooh, what else could I do? Um, I could go for the five coffee, but if I was gonna stick with going here, I don't actually need the coffee. Maybe we go with a slight change of plan. Now that I've rolled all of that coffee, Maybe we go up here instead, because look at all this. Hmm. 
Interesting. No, I think... Oh, well, that's just as bad. That's the books. <laughs> uh, we could go four and four. Yeah, let's do that. I'm going to go with four and four, and I'm going to have five coffee. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Now, there is one thing that I forgot to do that I've just remembered. Every time you generate resources... Uh, the price of goes up by one. So I should have put the price of diamonds up. And the way that you do that is you just cross out the lowest value number. So diamonds, the market price of diamonds is now two and the second for coffee. So that's turn two done. Right, turn three. We've rolled a two, three, four. Okay, so at this point, I need to definitely decide where I'm going to go. I think I might stick with here. Oh, but then can I use the coffee afterwards? Ah, uh, there's lots of coffee down here. Maybe I should be going down here instead. Hmm. Well, maybe I should be going here. Because there's three coffee there. I've got loads of coffee, and then I want somewhere that gets rid of two coffee. Because you want to get rid of stuff in these stalls as soon as you can, because that's where the maintenance comes in which gets very expensive. Okay, I'm now thinking I might go up there instead. So we're gonna need some spices. Can I get spices with this? Two, three, and a four would be four books. Two, four, and a three would be three spices. That's good, let's go with that. So a two, and co uh, column two, row four, and I'm gonna go for three spices. So I've not quite utilized the whole of that space, but price of spices goes up by one. And that's turn three. Right, turn four. Two, five, and a five. Now, at this point, we know we're going to be going up here. And I know that I want books. No, hang on a minute. What have I got? I've got coffee. I've got diamonds. I've got spices. I either want gold or I want books. Probably. Oh, dear. I just realised I need all five if I go up there. Oh, do we change our plan again? <laughs> do we go somewhere else? This is the problem with me in games. I, I make a decision and then I change my mind and go somewhere else. Um, I'm going to end up paying a huge amount of maintenance cost on this one. I think we might go down here. Because I don't need books down here. So I'm going to need a gold. Right, how can I get a gold? Can I get a gold with that? That's, that's five books. Uh, what if I do five and five? That's two coffee. What if I do two and five? That's five coffee. Yeah, so I can't get gold. I need to decide if I'm going to change one of these dice or do I just... So what I could do is, is not bother getting the gold and just choose one of the other goods to increase the price of it. Oh, that might work. Yeah, that, that very much might work. Okay, let, let's go with that. Let's go with not getting the gold. And I'm actually going to increase the value of... Uh, well, what have we got? That was a five, wasn't it? Five and five is two coffee, but that's a bit of a waste. But I'm about to spend that two coffee, so it will save me on maintenance. <sighs> is that a waste? No, we're going to go with that. We're going to go with five and five, and we're going to go with two coffee. That increases the value of coffee, right? And that is the first four turns done. Okay, so the next turn is traveling. Now, when you travel, you can choose not to travel, uh, and you don't move at all, but you can't sell from in the castle, so you definitely want to travel on the first turn. But on future turns, you don't have to travel. You can stay where you are. Or you can go to anywhere on the board. And then what you do is you add up the total travel costs for the route that you've used and you write that number in here. So I think we're just going to go down this road here, fight some goblins on the way, uh, and we are paying a travel cost of six. Again, we could have gone here and we'd have paid 11. So you can go as far as you want. You don't just have to go one space. But we're just going to go one space to here and I'm going to pay a travel cost of six. 
Right, now I get to sell. So as I mentioned, you've got to complete these scrolls in their entirety. So I have this four scrolls here. It's four completely separate uh, things, and I can do as many of these as I want to. But if you're going to do one, you have to do all of it. So I need to decide which ones I'm going to do. Now, I haven't got any gold, so I can't do this one. But can I do all of the other ones? I think I can. Yes. Right. So let's do the first one which is one coffee and one diamond. So to basically sell a good, what you do is you put a cross through the square. So the circle, when, when, when I drew the circle or drew the dot, that means I had one of them. And when you put a cross through it, that means I have now sold it. So I no longer have that coffee because I've sold it for there. Uh, I'm also going to sell one of these diamonds. Uh, and the price of coffee is three and the price of diamonds is two. So that gets me five. So I just put a five in there. This next one is two diamonds and a spice. So two diamonds and a spice, which is six. The next one I can't do, but I could come back here later. So you leave it blank. And then this final one is one diamond, uh, one coffee and two spices. Okay, which is three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then what you do is you write the total uh, amount of money that you've made, which is 20. And you put it in there, 20. Okay, that's selling. Now we come on to maintenance. Maintenance is a really interesting aspect of the game. If you have any of your market stalls that still have goods in them, you must now either throw those goods away or pay the maintenance cost. So if we look at this stall here, I used to have four diamonds. I no longer have diamonds. So that, that stall is done and dusted. I never have to pay maintenance for that um, and I can never put anything else in it. The same here. Remember, once you've chosen a stall to put resources in, you can never put them in again. So although there was one more space in here, I can't use that space anymore. So that's gone as well. Here, there was two coffee in here. I can never add any more, so that's gone. Um, and here we have five coffee still in this stall. So I can choose to throw it all away or pay three maintenance. Well, I'm, I'm going to pay three maintenance. I'm definitely not throwing five coffee away. And there we go. That is that. That is the first seven turns of the game. We now go on to turn eight and we roll some more dice. And at this point, I should be starting to look at where I want to go to get rid of this five coffee because it's costing me money all of the time in maintenance. But I'm looking up here and I'm thinking, oh, I could get rid of three of it there. Um, yeah, well, let's let's roll some dice first and see what we get. Two, three, and a six. I do like the sixes. So, if we are going to go here next, if we are, then all I have is coffee. And I'm going to get three dice rolls, but I could use those three dice rolls to get gold, spices, diamonds, or books. Remember, you can stay where you are. I could, if I wanted to, just stay here and just sell to this one remaining scroll. As I say, I'm, I'm teaching you how to play the game. I'm not teaching you any strategy because I've only played it once before. Um, but what can we do with this? What can we do with a two and a three? So it could be that we get some books. Could we get, the, we get loads of books? Um, or it could be that I use this six and actually get anything we want. Because three spices looks quite nice with a low maintenance value of one. I do quite like that. The other option is some spices in there with a maintenance value of two. But we could do that and this, this looks quite nice. Maybe we'll go there next time. So maybe we go here this time. Oh, but we need everything. Where's the best place for me to go? I mean, I could always go back up here. But I'm kind of thinking I might want to end here once the prices of everything's gone up. Oh, it's tricky. Um, I say having the six as a wild card is great, but it does mean I've got <laughs> more thinking to do. Um, I think I'm just going to go with my original plan. Oh, but that seems such a waste. Okay. Yeah, I don't really want any more coffee because that's going to increase my maintenance too much. 
Although maintenance of three is not bad. I was worried I was going to end up with loads of maintenance, but thankfully I managed to get rid of everything except the coffee. Um, and if I use the six and the... If you use the six as a five, then it's only two of something. I could do there and get three books, but that seems a waste. Uh, I could go there. Right, I'm going to do that. I'm going to use the six as a two. So I've got two twos. With the three, I've got three spices. So one, two, three spices. And that increases the value of spices. Okay, right. Next. That's that turn done. Another dice roll. It's a one, four, five. Okay, so no wild card this time. Now, I don't really want to use the one to get goods. Well, you could. It depends where I'm going to go. I've got coffee and I've got spices. Am I going to go here? How many spices have I got? I've only got three. Could go here. Could get books. Books, books is good. But it's only one book. Ah, the books are down here. So that one is no good for me, unless I change it. I could change it. Yeah, we could totally change it. Let's do that. I'm going to change the one into a three. Which goes there. I'm going to use the four there. And I'm going to get myself five books. One, two, three, four, five. There you go. Right, we've got five books, so the price of books has gone up. And that's that turn. Right, next turn. It's a four, five, six. Wow, big numbers again. So I'm not really bothered about, because I can't get diamonds and gold. So I'm not really bothered about that. So maybe I should be looking at increasing the price of something that I've already got, like books. Which I can do. Oh, but this maintenance cost is going to be huge. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. This is very different from the way that I played yesterday. We're going to go 5-4 and we're going to get six books. Yeah, let's not worry about the maintenance, <laughs> he says. Okay, there you go. So the price of books has gone up. And that's that turn. Okay, so now we're travelling. So I'm going to travel to here. Again, you can go more than one space if you want to. But I think I'm just going to go there. So my travel costs are five. I'm then going to sell one spice and two books. Now, where are we selling those books from? Let's sell them from here. One two. So that's two books and a spice, which is nine. I'm also selling a coffee book and a spice, which will also be nine. Uh, so a spice and a coffee and a book. Uh, and that's it. I can't sell to here because I don't have any gold or any diamonds. Right. So my selling is 18. Now, my maintenance, this is where it's going to get tricky because if I pay all of my maintenance, that's four, seven, ten, that's eleven. That's eleven money in maintenance. Now, what I could do, remember, you can throw goods away at any time. So if I wanted to, I could throw these two books away here and then I wouldn't pay the maintenance. And that's what I'm thinking of doing because I've got six books here. So I think these books, they weren't very good. They've gone a bit mouldy. So we're throwing them away. That means that I don't have to pay for that one. Now, I might want to do the same here, but it's only one maintenance. So I'm actually going to keep that spice. So my maintenance costs are four, seven, eight. Eight maintenance. Right, moving on. Next turn, roll some dice. Keep rolling, big numbers. Two, five, and a five. Now, it could be that you get into a situation where um, you you don't roll, you, you roll, and your only options are stores that you've already used. At that point, you just don't take any goods. Um, but what have we got? We've got a. We could have five more books. No, sorry, we could. 
yeah, we could have five more books, which is just insane, but it increases the price and then we just throw them away. We could do that. Uh, we could get five more coffee and increase the price of coffee. Um, now we've already got four coffee. So where do we want to go this turn? Do we want to go here? Because we've got the coffee, we've got the spice, we've got the books. We just need gold and diamonds. Um, which we can't get with these dice. Og. Yeah. Okay, I am going to change a five to, uh, sorry, I'm changing a two to a one and we're going to get some diamonds. All right, we have filled this stall up of diamonds. That increases the price of diamonds. Now, I don't know whether you should be increasing the price. I've not got any gold. Because, um, I, yeah, I'm not, I'm leaving gold down here. I think there is a possibly a strategy where you just really raise the price of one of them quite high. Anyway, that's that turn done. Next turn. Oh, low numbers. Two, two, three. Right, okay. What are we going to do with the two, two, and the three? Uh, well, we can't have two and two because that stall has already been used. So we could have two more books or we could have two more spices. We've got one more roll after this. Um... I'm going to take the two more spices. Now that does mean that that stall is then used, but that's the way it goes. Right, that's turn done, that turn done. Next turn, it's a two, two and a five. Hmm. Okay, well we can't have two and two. We could have two and five, we could have five and two. Do I want five coffee or do I want five books? I don't want either of them. Wow. I'm going to take five coffee. Three, four, five, which increases the value of coffee. Weird, I've not taken gold at all. Right, okay, where are we going to travel to? Where is the best place? We have a whole bunch of spices. We have a whole bunch of coffee. We have a whole bunch of diamonds. We don't have any gold. Gold is the problem. So wherever we go, we can only sell to the non-gold spaces. Yeah, this is pretty bad, isn't it? I think I should have probably used another while to, to change a gold price. Um, oh dear. Hmm. <laughs> now I'm miles away from anywhere. Okay. I mean, I could stay where I am and just not sell anything, but that seems a really bad idea. I scored really well yesterday in my learning game. I don't think I'm going to score as well today. I definitely should have taken the gold. Ugh. So if I pay to go all the way up here, I can sell those two things. I don't think it's worth it. I'd be having to pay five, six, I'd pay 22 to go here. I'd hardly make that amount of money back. I might have to go here. Yeah, this is where we're going to go. So we pay 5 plus 11. <sighs> pay 16. It's expensive. Right, and we're going to sell. Um, so we don't have the gold. So I'm going to sell a book and two diamonds. So the two diamonds are coming from here. And the book is coming from... Here? So two diamonds and a book, which is nine. And I'm also selling a coffee spice and a book. There's the book. Uh, there's the spice. And there's the coffee. So coffee is four, spice is four, eight, book is three, is 11. Yeah, this is not going as well as yesterday at all. I've, I've I've made 20. I, it cost me 16 to travel. I've made 20. Now we go into maintenance. 
Now, here's where it all falls apart because I don't want to throw this stuff away. Um, so I'm happy throwing this away because I've got this here and that should be enough, but I don't want to throw the rest away. So my maintenance is two, six, nine, 11. So I, I lost money that turn, massively lost money that turn. Cost me 27 and I only made 20. Yeah. Wow. So just looking at this again, I think there was a I think there was a cheaper way because this road is really expensive. There must be some troll or something. I went that way because I thought that was the shortest way. That cost 16. There's actually a cheaper way here. If I go that way, that way and that way, it's only 15. There you go. I've saved a penny. 15. Right. OK, two more dice rolls and then we're traveling again. One, a one and a four. Okay, now, I want to use the four for a quantity because a one as a quantity is rubbish. But, oh, that means using another of these dice. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I'm gonna use a four. I'm gonna turn a one into a four. So I'm gonna have four gold. There you go, we've got four gold. Anybody who's been shouting at the screen saying get gold, I now have gold. Okay, price of gold goes up. Uh, and we're going to cross off this. Two, four, and a six. What do we need now? Where am I going to go? I, I want to go here. I want to go here and sell everything. Got the coffee. I don't have enough spices. I have the gold. I have the diamonds. I have the books. So if I can just get some more spices, I can sell everything here. Okay, can I get spices with a two, four and a six? Can't do two, four. Um, in fact, my, oh, the spices down here. So I can, I can use the six as a, sorry, use the four as a four, use the six as a five and use the two to get two spices. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. Two spices is enough. Cost of spices goes up. Right, done. We're then going to travel to here. That cost me six. And I think I can spend everything. So, yeah, I've got two gold. Yep. I've got three coffee. Yep. Uh, I've got three spices. Yep. And I've got two diamonds. Yep. And I've got two books. So again, you don't have to do all four scrolls, but I can do all four scrolls, so I'm adding them all up. So I'm going to do the two diamonds first, two diamonds, then I'm going to do the two books, uh, three spices, so I'm going to use that one, that one, and that one, uh, three spices, three coffee, so I'm going to be using that one, that one, and that one for the coffee. And the last bit is two gold. I'm gonna use that one and that one. Right, okay, so the price of these, this is quite a lot. So that's two, five, that's 13. 13. Uh, this one is two, seven, that's 11. Okay, this one is three, that's 13. Oh, I made a mint this turn. Uh, three and six. Okay, so the total amount that I made this turn is uh, 24, 30, 43. There you go. That's what I've been saving up for. <laughs> 43. Now we do maintenance. Difficult decisions time again. Um, do I want to keep this gold here? Do I want to keep that one spice there? Do I want to keep these two coffee? I'm tempted at this point to just keep what I've got, which might be the wrong thing to do because those maintenance costs are, are quite pesky. But if I'm going to go here next, I need to keep the two coffee, which I've got two coffee. I need to keep the one spice. I've got the one spice. 
I've got the book and I need some more gold. So I think I'm just going to keep everything. My maintenance costs therefore are two, uh, four, so that's six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Maintenance costs of eleven. Okay, right. Off we go. Three more dice rolls left. We got a three and two fours. And I decided I want gold. I'm, I'm planning on going here and I've, I need lots of gold. Well, I need three gold. Two, in fact. I've kept two gold, so I only need two gold. Well, I can do it. I've got, a, I've got a four there, I've got a three there, and I've got a four. So that's four gold. There you go. Done. One, two, three, four. Of course, that is increasing the price of gold, and actually I'd prefer to increase the price of something else. But that's okay. One more dice roll and then we're travelling. One, one, four. So, if I increase the price of gold again, I'm actually going to sell lots of gold this turn. And I can do it. Four and a one, and just a one, to put it in there, just to increase the price of gold. Okay, it's all starting to come together. We are then going to travel to here at a cost of seven. And now we're going to sell. So I think I've got everything. I've got the four gold, I've got the two coffee, I've got the spice, I've got the book. I have. Right, so I'm just going to cross it all off. Where am I going to cross the gold off from? Uh probably here and keep that because that's less lower maintenance so one two three four gold uh, one spice can come from here the two coffee can come from here so that's that then done and the book can come from here and I've still got one book so that is uh, that's nine this is eight that's twelve uh, and the book is only worth three, so that's seven, that's eleven. Okay, so we've made uh, 32. Right, now, maintenance, that's all I, I've got two gold here. I need to decide if I'm keeping this. I've got one book here, really expensive maintenance, but everything else has gone. All of that's gone, that's gone, that's gone, that's gone. Yeah, so it's literally just this one and this one. Which ones do I want to keep? Now, I'm only going to get one more dice roll and then one more travel. So, I need to decide, is there anywhere... I'm only going to get one more commodity, basically. Um, so, I'm thinking of where it's best to go. Oh, this is this is quite expensive if I go here. And all I would be able to do is sell to here if I had the two diamonds. Hmm. This is tricky. This is really tricky. I'm not sure. There. I think that's where I want to go. Oh, but that's crazy expensive. Okay, so I think I'm just going to have a cheap sell and we're going to go here. Do I have any spices? Oh no, this is useless. I've got the gold. I don't have any spices. So I would need to generate spices and I also don't have any diamonds and I don't have any coffee. So that's that's no good. Um, where else could I go that's not too expensive? Don't want to go back there. It might end up being here. If I go here, I've got the book, I've got the gold, I'd need two diamonds. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to try and do. Which means I need to keep me gold and I need to keep the book. So I'm keeping it. So I'm spend, spending six on maintenance. Right, last roll of the game. Here we go. Big numbers again. 
Super big numbers. So I've decided I'm going here, I think. Because <laughs> then I can get rid of the gold. The gold in the books, I need two diamonds. I can't get two diamonds with what I've rolled. Oh, rats. Um, five, five, no, five, four, no, four, five, four, five. Or, right, any combination is no use whatsoever. So we're going to have to use a wild card or just not get anything. Um, so if I use a wild card instead of the five, then I could go two, four and get a coffee, which is no good. Coffee golden books. Anywhere that needs coffee golden books. <sighs> no, I don't think there is. So I could change one to a five, but then I'm losing five. And I've already got a five. Oh, this is a terrible roll. I could get more books. <laughs> I don't need more books. Oh, I could get more books and go here. That might be about the only thing that I can do. Yeah. Okay. So we are going to use a two to convert that five into a two. So we go two, five, and I get four books. One, two, three, four. Terrible last turn. Then I'm going to spend 11 to travel to here. Oh, hang on. What did I do? Books. Price of books has gone up. Uh, so I've traveled for 11 and we're going to sell one gold and two books, which is basically 12 money. So I'd have been better. Oh no, I've made one money. Um, and I crossed that off. One gold, two books. So I didn't need to keep that book in the end. Um, and I haven't got any spices to do that one. And then at the end of the game, you just you just throw away all of your remaining uh, resources because you don't pay maintenance at the end. So what did I get? I got 12. Right, time to add up the scores. So my total sales were uh, 20, 40, 58, 58, 98, 101, 133, 145. So 145. These boxes do need to be a little bit bigger. So I got 145 money from selling stuff. That seems a lot. I mean, this round here was amazing. Traveling costs, 6, 11. That's a 15, isn't it? So 26, 32, 39, 50. So it cost me 50 to travel. Uh, my maintenance was huge. Uh, 22, 30, 39. 39, but I've still got a 5 left, so I get a bonus points of 5. Right, so basically it's 145 minus 50 is 95, that's 56 plus 5, 61. So my score is 61. Now, if you've been watching this video, obviously I hope you found it useful, but if you've been watching it and you've printed it off your own sheet and you've used these dice rolls, let me know what score you got. Um, but yeah, there, there you go, that is how the game plays. Now I did say at the start I was going to tell you how the random road generation works. This was the automatic one where it chose the numbers for us but what you would normally do is you would normally start off with a blank uh, with a piece of paper with blank spaces here um, with no numbers in them and then again this would be something where one player would roll and everybody would choose the result of that roll. So what happens is one player rolls the dice and then what you do is you take the lowest two numbers, in this case a six and a three, add them together, nine. Every player must write a nine in one of the boxes anywhere. And then you repeat that. So now we're doing a five. So now everybody must write a five somewhere. And basically you repeat that until all of the boxes are filled. Now what that does mean is the game is going to take a few minutes longer at the start, but it does mean that players have a real choice at the start of the game of where they put the numbers, which once you know the game can, can be very important. And again, every player does that independently. 
um, but it's, it's one set of dice that's rolled. So everybody will be using the same numbers. It's just where you choose to put them on the sheet. Um, yeah, that, that matters. But there you go. That, that, that is the game. So this is designed by Emmanuel Ornella, who originally published Hermagore in 2006. Uh, and he has to say that the company that produced that game was called Mind the Move. It's now called Mind the Moves. And for those people who, like me, are fans of the games that he's done, uh, he said that the website is going to be up and running again and they're going to be doing some, some more games again, which is very, uh, very exciting. As I say, I've been a fan of his. Uh, I got Hermagore when it came out in 2006. And there you go. That is how you play Hermagore Market. As I mentioned at the start, all you need is each player to print off their own sheet uh, and then one player can roll the dice. So this is a great game for playing remotely with friends where, where yeah, one player rolls the dice and tells everybody what the results are. Um, and yeah, you can play along and see how, see how well you got. If you've been playing along, let me know what your score was. Let me know if you beat me. Uh, I didn't do as well as I did yesterday. I thought this was going to go awful, but then I had that, that really good round where I managed to sell a lot. And uh, yeah, brought my score back. 61, I think. I think he's not a bad score. I don't, I don't really know. So just before we go, I wanted to say a big thank you, obviously, to the designer for asking me to create this video, but also thank you to all of my Patreon supporters who help fund the channel. If you want to support me directly, you can do so by visiting patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. Until next time, take care and thanks for watching.